Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. We got a quick little video for you as we take a look at the Sausage Makers dry curing cabinet. You guys have been asking for a video like this and quite frankly, I thought it was time to upgrade our DIY setup. So this is what their solid stainless steel construction dry curing cabinet looks like. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to initially set it up and this can apply to either the stainless steel model or the wood panel model that they both currently have. So when you open this chamber up, it's gonna have several boxes inside. I've already taken them out. At the very bottom, you're gonna see their humidification system. And so all we're gonna do is unplug this humidification system and pull the box out. The idea here is that we wanna thoroughly clean, sanitize uh, everything that's gonna go into that chamber. So we're gonna remove the top and you can see how the wicking system is designed. It's actually connected on the sides by some zip ties and so you'd have to bust the zip ties to remove it completely we don't want to remove it completely I'm just going to remove it from those pegs so that we can set it to the back part of it as we put it to our sink and then go ahead and spray it down with a cleaning disinfecting solution whatever solution you want to use to clean your box is totally up to you you could do a 50 50 you know, vinegar water mix. You can use a sanitizer like Iota 4 or Star Sand. It's really up to you. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and let that sit. We've got it completely wiped out. That's going to do its thing for a few minutes. And while that's being sanitized, let's go ahead and look at our cabin. Now in the cabinet, I'm using a disinfecting cleaner. I just want to spray down all the walls. I want to make sure not to spray down any of the electrical components or the sensors or the fans. So I'm just kind of paying attention very closely to where I'm spraying. And once we get that completely sprayed down and wiped clean, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our box again. Now, all the other components that are part of this chamber, we've already sprayed down and cleaned. And for the sake of brevity, I'm not gonna show you every single one of them, but you do wanna clean and disinfect basically everything that's going on inside your chamber. So let's go ahead and get that wicking filter wound back up and you're gonna put it in a snake-like pattern. And once you get that completely done, you are good to go. We're going to place this back into the cabinet. This is going to go at the very bottom. It's been rinsed out really well. And so if you used any kind of harsh chemicals or disinfecting soaps, you definitely want to make sure that you rinse it out so you don't have any of that residual behind. So we've got it in the bottom. We're going to put our top on it and reconnect it. Now, this particular top I washed by hand. It's been sanitized, and I paid very special attention not to get any of those fans wet with uh, the spray that I was using. So let's plug it in. And it's this plug that's actually going to control the fans for the humidification system. All right, now all we got to do is add a little bit of water. For the water, I like to alkalinize it just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some baking soda to our water at a ratio of one tablespoon per quart. There's six quarts of water that we're going to be adding in total. So I'm putting six tablespoons of baking soda into it. And there it is. This is what that looks like. The max fill line is seven quarts, and you could fill it to seven quarts if you like. Uh, but once we have that in, let's go ahead and put the drip tray on top. Drip tray just slides right on in. It's been disinfected as well. And you'll know you have it right because this back lip right here lines up exactly with that shelf. We've got a drip guard. This is going to protect your fans from any uh, liquid that's dripping from your meat. And you're going to notice you've got a front panel here. And on the back, there's really nothing. And so you want that front panel facing you. And we're just going to place that drip guard directly over that channel. It fits in no problem. Easy to remove, easy to clean. At this point, your chamber is completely set up on the inside. If you have racks for the chamber, you could put those in. If you've got the bars to hang your salami, you can now put those in as well. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the unit on by pressing the power button. And you'll see here that the temperature inside the cabinet is 79 and the relative humidity inside the cabinet is 68. In order to change that, we have to hit the set button. But if you hit the set button, nothing happens. There's an auto feature here that has disabled the set button, so you don't accidentally hit it and then start to change your parameters. So what we need to do is press the button directly above set for a couple of seconds. Once you hear that beep, it will enable the option to set it. And once we hit set, now we can go ahead and adjust the parameters. First option is temperature. We're gonna increase that to 55 Fahrenheit. And then once we hit set again, the next option is humidity. We're gonna increase that to 80% because I'm gonna be putting salami in here. But depending on what you're making, you know, if you're making, you know, dry aged beef, you could lower the temperature and keep the humidity high. And now you have a dry aging chamber instead of a dry curing chamber. 
So the temperature is going to drop to 55. That's going to increase to 80 percent. And then we'll be able to put salami in there. Now, this chamber can also be used as a fermentation chamber, you know, in the event that you want to ferment your salami or cheese or other projects that require higher temperature and controlled humidity. Let me show you how to do that. All we need to do is access this initial menu by hitting the set button. We're going to increase the temperature to whatever temperature you need for fermentation. As an example, I'm going to just do 99 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the max it'll go. And then we're going to increase the humidity to 85%. That's typical fermentation range for a nice tangy salami. Three hours later, this is what our chamber looks like on the inside. It looks like we are at 97 Fahrenheit with an 84% humidity on the inside. Let's open up the chamber. And I could tell you, you know, we're fogging up on the window. You could definitely get that blast of humid, warm air being circulated inside. This chamber is absolutely brilliant uh, for fermentation, no problem. Now you will notice over time that the basin to the left of the chamber will start to accumulate water. Just drain it when it gets full. This is water that's being accumulated through the normal activity from your chamber, whether it's simply condensing some of the humidity from your chamber or through the de-icing process that the fridge goes through. And there you go. Not too bad, right? I mean, cleaning out the chamber, getting it ready for some dry cured meats. If you have any questions about this process, let me know. We are going to leave ours empty for the next 48 hours. I just want to see where the humidity and where the temperature kind of level out at. We have a couple high growth thermometers inside the chamber, one at the top and kind of one in the middle. And that's just going to give us a little more information about what's actually going on in the chamber. You know, the average temperature and humidity, when the compressor kicks on, how long it holds its temperature, things like that. And um, I find all that information incredibly useful, kind of big picture sort of stuff. If you want to see a more in-depth video about how to access a particular menu on the control system that allows you to customize your controls, you know, calibrate your sensors, uh, change when the humidifier uh, fans cut on and off and things like that. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you're new to this channel and you like sausage making, dry cured meat projects like salami or prosciutto, maybe even just meat preservation, take a moment and click that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of all of our future uploads. We are in the middle of working on Celebrate Sausage season three. It's going to be bigger and better than ever. I cannot wait to share with you the lineup. We've got a lot of really great YouTube sausage making personalities that are going to be joining us on this year's show. So I'm glad you could join us. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.